Peace and blessings, family. Peace and blessings. We're back in our video. This one's Mark the Messenger. This one's to be about how to feel God's presence in your life. I made a video a couple months ago talking about seven signs you'll see when God's presence in your life. So this video is going to be for those who are seeking God's presence and doing the best they can, uh, you know, wanting to, you know, know ways and steps they can. So these are the things that I did too on my walk uh, back when I first started walking with Christ. So hopefully this could help you guys out too. All right, the number one thing, this is the number one thing you want to do when you want to feel God's presence in your life, is you want to seek him with all your heart, okay? This is the key. This is number one. I'm, let me go over a Bible verse. This is in Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11, 13. I'll let you guys read on the side too. It says, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said to the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an unexpected end. Then shall you call upon me, and ye shall go in to pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. And ye shall seek me and find me. And then y'all shall seek me and find me when you search for me with your whole heart. Okay. So when you search for the most, I would do a whole heart. Think about the times, guys, when we had goals, when we had uh, dreams, uh, what, what, you know, the things of this world, right? We did the best we can with, we, with all our heart. We want to have that same energy when it comes to seeking out God, seeking out his presence. Okay. So that's the number one thing you want to be doing. You want to make sure that you're seeking him with all your heart. Okay. And whenever you're seeking God with all your heart, he's going to be number one in your life. You're not going to be nothing else. He, it's number one. It's all on him. And you got to be willing to let go of certain things, certain people, anything that's separating you from uh, feeling God's presence in your life. And that's going to be hard for a lot of people because that requires obedience and that requires you walking in the spirit. And some people have a hard time doing that. But I'm letting you guys know, if you're not seeking the most high with all your heart, you're not searching them. It's going to be very hard to feel God's presence in your life, okay? And I just gave you all a scripture. All right, number two is a season of isolation, okay? And I, I always talk about my videos about isolation, you know, stuff like that. And, and I always talk about make it, making a season. And the reason why it's important to, you know, sometimes spend some seasons in isolation, three months, four months, or whatever how long God is leading you to, is because I, I make sure I circled it. There's no distractions, okay? Even Christ himself, um, did some uh, isolation. This is in Matthew chapter 14, verse 23. And when he had sent up the multitudes away, Jesus went up to a mountain apart, apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. Okay, so even Jesus himself went to a mountain to pray by himself. He isolated himself for a short period of time, or I don't know, it doesn't say the exact day, but he isolated himself to get closer to God. He, get, he got into prayer, which I'm gonna go over in a bit. So you're going to want to spend some time alone. It could be away from your family. It could be away from your loved ones. Not forever, obviously, but just for a short period of time. Maybe you have fallen short. Maybe uh, there's a sin that's keeping you, that you're struggling with. Maybe your stronghold. Whatever the case may be, you got to spend some time alone. Isolation. God has always, in my beginning, especially in the beginning stages when I was seeking God's presence, I found myself isolated a lot of times. And this is a good thing because I'm now building my relationship with God. I'm now building my relationship with Christ. I'm knowing more about the Bible. I'm gaining more wisdom. I'm gaining more knowledge. Um, you know, I'm building myself up spiritually. Okay, I'm building my foundation on Christ. So when things get hard in my life, it doesn't matter because my foundation is built upon a rock and not a sand. Those foundations are built upon a sand. You know, the people who play church and stuff like that, which I'm going to go over in a bit. Uh, when the storm comes, the tribulation comes, they wither away. But those who are foundation are on Christ are going to be on a rock. So when the tribulations do come my way and, you know, the bad, you know, things that we can't control, it won't matter because my foundation was built on God. And those, it was all through those isolation periods, the times where I was suffering, the times where I was, you know, be, being by myself, even though, even though I had opportunities to be with the crowd and, you know, do those type of things. But I was like, nah, I'm, I'm putting God first because, you know, when it comes to seeking him with all your heart, he has to be first in your life. Okay. So that's, I feel like these, these are the number two things guys. Like that's, that's so important, you know, season of isolation and seeking him with your heart. Okay. Number three, this is also key to, I mean, all this is key. <laughs> all this is important. But number three is departing from willful sin and living a lifestyle that seeks repentance. Okay. Departing from willful sin. The Bible says, um, to, uh, resist the devil and he shall flee from you. Okay. So, Whenever you're living a life that, that resembles of sin and it's like an everyday thing, that's separating you from God. That's separating you from the Holy Spirit. And, you know, the one thing you can do to combat that is a live a life of repentance. So when you do fall short, when you do make a mistake, you got repentance. Okay, you got the blood of Jesus, okay, to wash away your sins. Okay, so you want to make sure that you're, and let's say, let's say you're something that, that you're struggling with. Like you want to fight it off. You want to apply your faith with works and fight it off. Now, you're not going to fight it off the next day. 
or maybe some of you guys are strong enough to go completely cold, tur cold turkey. But if you aren't, you want to fight it off, okay? Remember, the Bible says that the spirit is raging war against your flesh, and the flesh is raging war against your spirit. So what does that mean? That means when you feed yourself up more spiritually, okay, it's going to be a lot easier to overcome your flesh, and vice versa. If you feed yourself up fle your fleshly, it's going to be harder to rage war against, uh, or it's going to be harder to walk in the spirit, okay? So this is key, guys, departing from willful sin and li living a lifestyle that seeks repentance, okay? Number four is reading and applying the word of God, okay? So you want to make sure that you're reading it and applying it into your life. The Bible says that, the, I'll leave a verse right here in James chapter 1, verse 22, 25. It talks about those who read the Bible, but they don't want to apply it to their life and they deceive, they deceive their own selves, okay? So you don't want to be like that. When you read the Bible, you want to make sure you're applying it to your life. So when Christ is saying, if you love me, you keep my commandments, okay, let me, let me learn about God's 10 commandments. Let me learn to keep that, okay? Uh, what it says, the Bible says, where Christ says, you know, repent or perish. Okay, let me live a lifestyle that seeks repentance. So y'all see where I'm getting at. So when the Bible says something, you're you're applying it into your life. Okay, so that's that's how you grow. Okay, even the Bible says, as newborn babes desire the milk that ye may grow thereby. Okay, so make sure that you're reading the Bible. Okay, you're learning about the Word of God. You're, you're learning about God's love and applying it to your life. Okay, so that's number four. All right, reading and applying the Word of God. Number five is no longer playing church, okay? No longer playing, I was talking about that earlier, no longer playing church and build a relationship with Christ, okay? The Bible says no man can go into the Father, but first to the Son. So you want to build a relationship with uh, the Son, Jesus Christ, okay? So what does it mean by no longer playing church? You're no longer doing what the world does. It's going to church on Sundays and just worshiping God on Sundays, okay? Even though the Sunday is not even the Sabbath day, but you're just, you know, you just, that's what the system, that's what the matrix is telling you. You got to do, you got to go to church on Sundays and repeat, repeat, repeat. No, don't seek a relationship with God. No, that's, that's completely false. You want to make sure you're reading the Bible for yourself. Don't rely on a pastor. Don't rely on anybody but God himself. You want to be seeking him. And that's what it comes, when you're seeking him with your whole heart, you're not going to rely on nobody else but him. Okay, now God definitely does use uh, brothers to, to teach, you know, to help you guys out, to inform you, to instruct you, stuff like that. I'm not saying that you can't learn from someone. We want to make sure that when you, you, you can't be living a holy life on Sunday, right? But then Monday to Saturday is a complete opposite. So that's what I mean by not playing church. And I feel like a lot of people get caught up in that cycle where they're like, church is like, they, they, church has become their God, you know? And they, they're, they're simply just worshiping God at the church building. But Monday through Saturday, you don't see any fruits, Okay, so you make sure when you're when you're seeking God's presence in your life that you're bearing fruit, the fruits of the spirit, which talks about that in Galatians chapter five, verse twenty two to twenty three. Okay, number six is you want to have a strong prayer life and spending uh, spend some time fasting. Okay, a strong prayer life. So, you know, you want to be praying throughout the day. Now, the Bible does say you know pray without ceasing, so you can pray as much as you want. But you want to be living a lifestyle that's it's deep in prayer because what's, what that does and fasting too, it builds up your spirit, which I was talking about earlier, how the more you feed your spirit, the stronger your spirit's going to be to overcome your flesh, to overcome your carnal desires, to overcome uh, sin. Okay, so you want to be doing, you know, having a strong prayer life, okay, and you want to spend some time fasting. Now, fasting... You could do as much as you can, you know, for those who don't know what fasting is, it's pretty much where you, uh, there's multiple, there's different fasts in the Bible. There's a Daniel fast where uh, he only ate uh, veggies and drank water. And there's a fast, a dry fast where you don't eat or drink anything. And then there's a fast where you just drink water, a water fast. You're not, you're not drinking anything else but water. Uh, now it's up to you. Fasting is between you and God. Not, that's why the Bible says when you fast, don't be like the hypocrites who tell everybody they're fasting, uh, who you know, you know, get all sad and look all sad to appear righteous to other men that they're fasting. So it's between you and God. So whatever God leads you to, this is why it's important to have a relationship with Him, so He could tell you, okay, I want you to do a dry fast for three days. I want you to do a water fast for one day, or maybe it could be sixteen hours. Maybe you got, you might have some health problems, whatever the case may be. Okay, let's let's work my way. Let's do this. Do, do a twelve hour. Let's do sixteen hours, and then build yourself up. Okay, so this this is very key. This is all about guys. All this correlates to being walking in the spirit. All this correlates to being spiritual. Okay. All of this correlates to is fasting, prayer, uh, you know, spending some isolation so you can spend more time in God, departing from willful sin, okay, seeking God with all your heart. This is all spiritual, okay? Number seven, <laughs> the number seven is relax, chill. Yes, 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 yep, you see it. Relax and chill and be patient, okay? What am I, what am I, what do I mean by that? So when it comes to seeking God's presence in your life, 
okay, don't be in a rush, okay? We gotta be, be long suffering. We gotta be patient. And as you're doing this, okay, as you're doing all this, it's gonna come where you're gonna, God's gonna strongly increase in your life. And now God is gonna use you to preach to other people, to save other souls for the kingdom, okay? So just relax, be patient as you're doing all this, of course. Okay, you don't wanna be doing the opposite of this and relaxing and chill, absolutely not. So if you're doing all this, you're applying all this, you know, and now, okay, just calm down, relax, chill, okay? You know, spend some time in nature, travel, um, you know, do things that you love to do, okay? There's nothing wrong with, you know, traveling, going out in nature, um, eating eating your favorite ice cream. So like just calm down, relax, okay? And just be patient, okay? Remember, patient is the fruit of the Spirit. So this is how to see God's presence in your life. I hope this guy's informed you. If you guys made this far, don't forget to like the video. And if you learned something from this and you want to see more type of content like this, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and share this video. I love you guys so much. I'm out. Peace.